Hi there, my name's Vince from Mr. Telephone and today I'm going to talk about how to run a USB signal down an Ethernet cable like a Cat5e or a Cat6 cable. So uh, let's say for example if you've got your equipment hidden away and you want to be able to bring uh, a USB out of it and connect it up. Well normally with the USB leads they have about a limit of 5 meters. You can like get extension leads that repeat the signal so you can have longer distances, I can think up to 30 meters, but you have to keep on adding on five meter lengths. So uh, another popular way is to connect it up through uh, an RJ45 network, so through your network wiring, and that, that will give you a, a lot longer runs. So basically you can get these little adapters, which are like RJ45 to USB, but the problem with these is there's, they're not really that flexible, so basically it's an RJ45 plug and it terminates in a USB female. But you might want to terminate it in a USB mini or a USB micro or a male, not a female. In which case then you're having to plug in adapter after adapter after adapter and you get more signal loss and also it doesn't look very nice. So basically what I'm going to show you on this video is how to push the signal down the RJ45 network by crimping on your own RJ45 plugs onto the end of the USB cable. Now a USB cable only uses four wires and there's normally eight wires in a, a network cable. So you have uh, on a USB you have two wires for the data, one wire for the five volt and one wire for the ground. So there's only five volts going through this. So what I do find is when you go over a long distance the, it, it does stop working and I presume it's to do with the voltage drop or the time it takes the data signal to go. I think if it's not recognised within so many seconds then it, uh, it loses the signal or milliseconds, whatever it is. Uh, but uh, the reason I, I looked into this to begin with is because I wanted to be able to control my Xbox in a different room, my Xbox One in a different room and the, uh, although the controllers are wireless they lose the signal after you get you know, a few, you know, whatever, like five meters away, 10 meters away, it seems to lose the signal. So basically, I was looking at a way of pushing it down the network wiring. Now, it does work, but I find once I get over 15 meters, because these controllers have like a, a vibration thing in them, I presume they must use quite a bit of power. And once I get over 15 meters, the Xbox, it works, but then if I'm playing a car game and if I crash and they start vibrating, it will then lose the signal and it will say Xbox controller disconnected and I then have to reconnect it, which obviously isn't ideal, but up to 10 meters, it works perfectly. Well, actually up to 15 meters, it works perfectly on the test that I've done, but I presume that will vary with the cables you use. But I presume that these are probably quite power hungry. Well, if you were to use, for example, a mouse or some other USB device, like a little, uh, maybe if you had uh, a mobile dongle, I presume that would work over a bigger distance. So I'm just gonna basically show you how to crimp your own RJ45 plugs onto the end of these USB cables. So I'm just gonna bring the camera down. So as you can see, I've already made up some here. This one here is a USB female to RJ45. This one is a nice little short USB micro to RJ45. And I've done various other ones. This is a USB male to RJ45. Okay, now they all use the same, uh, the same wiring guide. It doesn't really matter what wires you use in the RJ45, but I would always push the data, the, the two data wires in the USB, I would personally push them down a twisted pair. So for example, in your RJ45s, you've got your, your blue pair, your orange pair, your green pair, and your brown pair, so that's four pairs. So I would push the data either down the oranges, which would be pins one and two on the RJ45, the greens, which would be three and six, the blues, which is pins four and five, or the browns, which is seven and eight. I can't see it being an issue for the power side of it, the five volt side of it, but again, I did use a twisted pair. So what I've done is I've put the data signal down the, uh, I've put the data signal down the, the four and five, so that's the blue pair, and then I've put the, Beg your pardon, sorry, I've put the power signal down the four and five, that's the, that, that's the blue pair, and I've put the data signal down pins seven and eight, that's the, 
that's the brown pair. So I'm just going to quickly wire up uh, a lead just to show you. So this is a, let me zoom in a bit. This is just a standard USB cable, not a particularly expensive one. It's quite thin. Okay, so I've chopped, uh, I've chopped one of the ends off. And I'm just going to show you how to basically wire it up. So you need to strip it back. That's just taking the outer sheath off. And that's what we have inside now. Can you see that you've got the shield in there, you've got the foil sheeted. Some of them will have braided as well. Some of the better quality ones will have braided. But this one here is just some shielding. So we need to cut the shielding away. Okay, and we also have a drain wire here. Get rid of the drain wire. That's the drain wire, so we can get rid of that. And now we have four wires. The white and the green are the data. The red is the plus five volts and the black is the ground. Okay, so we want to make sure that definitely that the data ones are on a twisted pair and you might as well shove the, the power down a twisted pair as well. Yeah, okay. Now, the uh, the reason I've put them on the blue and the brown pair on the RJ45 on the on, on the Cat5 or Cat6 network is because Depending on if you're if you're just using fast Ethernet, which nowadays still most people are, it only uses two out of the four pairs. So you're only actually using the orange and the green pairs in that cable. So the blue and the brown pair aren't actually doing anything in most people's network. If you've got a giga network, gigabit network, then you will be using all four pairs. But the reason I've put it down the blues and the browns is because in theory, then you could still use a data signal down that wiring. For example, if you were to uh, just use those data economizers that I've talked about in another video, then you'll be able to shove a data signal and a USB signal down the one cable. So that's the reason I've opted to do it. But these ones that you get manufactured, these, these are just adapters that you get from China. As you can see, they've actually used the, uh, the, uh, the, the data signal wiring. So they've used one, two, three, and six. So they haven't used, they've used the orange and the green pairs there, although they're just all blue. They're, 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 the, they're the pins that they've actually used. So they've left the blue and the brown out from here. So the only problem is when you use this one, then yes, you can send a telephone signal down because that will use the blue pair in the middle, but most people do want to use a network for sending uh, an ethernet signal, uh, you know, a, a data signal down it. So that's why I'm pushing it down the blues and the browns. Okay, so what we do is, we're gonna be putting the black to pin four and the red to pin five and then we're going to be doing the green to pin 7 and the white to pin 8. That can be a little bit fiddly getting them into the plugs, but you need to leave about roughly about that much exposed. You can always tell because when you put your plug, when you put your plug, if you pretend you push the wire to the end, as long as the sheath goes under this little bit here that crushes down onto the cable, you'll be okay. In fact, I'm going to do it a little bit shorter. And again, we want a nice, a nice straight edge there. So if you're using normal side cutters, make sure you've got a nice straight edge. So this can be a bit hit and miss. But I'm going to push it in. Hopefully I'll get it first time. There we go. So just to double check. Sorry, I've got it the wrong way around there. Hold on. Sometimes you get it first time, other times you have to keep wiggling, wiggling them. There we go, so just double check now. That's uh, black into pin four, red into pin five, green into pin seven, and white into pin eight. If we have a look there, hope you can see the, the pin. So this is pin one on this side, so that's one, two, three, black to four, red to five, six is empty, 
green to 7 and white to 8. So let's just crimp that down. And there we go, you can see that the, the wires have gone right to the very end. You always make sure you push the wires to the very end of these plugs. I'm not going to go into too much details because I've already done quite a few videos on how to connect up these plugs. But I just wanted to show you the colour code. Yeah, okay. That's from the top. You can see it a bit more clearly from there. But remember, pin 1 is this side over here now because it's upside down. Yeah, okay. So, that's this one made. So this is a USB male to now RJ45 and obviously you need to do the same on the other side so this is another cable that I've made up and you just exactly copy what you've what you've done here yeah okay that's from the top view so just do the same on all the plugs that you want connecting up so uh, for this one here for the for the Xbox put this back down here now So for the Xbox we're going to need a micro because this up here has a little micro USB and we're going to need a male USB. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to basically bring the video camera over to the Xbox and I'm going to use it via a 10 meter lead just to show you the controller working. But you might want to use this for charging up your phone, you might want to use it for a mouse or a keyboard if you've got your computer hidden away under the stairs and you want to uh, you know you want to be watching Netflix or Now TV on your main TV and you've already got all your HDMI's and stuff wired up and you just need to get the USB signal out then uh, this is a this is a way of doing it especially if you've already got your house networked up it can be quite handy so many things you use USB and once you start to think that you can beat this 5 meter limit then uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite good with the possibilities of what you can do. So as I say, you can buy adapters already, but I quite like the flexibility of making up your own leads and then you know you can do anything USB related. You're not gonna have to keep looking for different adapters. So it's, uh, it's quite good. So I'm just gonna turn the camera off now, bring it over to the Xbox, and I'm gonna show you it connected up using these leads. Right, so I'm over by the Xbox now and uh, I'm going to connect up this controller. Now, just to show you that it is getting the power from the USB and not from the batteries, I'm going to take the batteries out, okay? So there's no batteries in there now. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have to plug the RJ45 to USB male into the Xbox. Okay, so that's plugged into the USB. Now, uh, we're going to have to use a coupler. You can either get these Cat 5e rated couplers. This is a, a Cat 6 RJ45 to RJ45 rated coupler. Or you can get these cheapy couplers for very little money. Yeah, less than a quid. They all do the, the same job, it's just the others are better because they're rated at Cat 5e or Cat 6. Now because I'm using a 10 metre lead, I am going to use a, a a rated adapter but the, the the cheap ones do work but the longer distance you go on the on the ethernet cable the the more loss there is going to be so you need to really minimize as much loss as possible also i'm using a lead here that is already about one and a half meters long which is uh which is not ideal this is just, just this will work fine on 10 meters but if i was to go to 15 meters then i would need to be cutting this down a lot less because there does seem to be a lot of loss on these usb cables but then there's not a lot of loss when it comes to the ethernet cables. So I'm just gonna plug in the coupler. Now I've got a 10 meter, this is a 10 meter ethernet cable here. This is a Cat6 stranded core version. I've also pushed it through my wiring because down here I have, uh, I've already networked up my house, but this is just for the purpose, it's just easy to show you on this video. So uh, this is a, a 10 meter stranded core, but I've used it down my solid core and it works absolutely fine. In fact, it would work probably a little bit better over the solid core because the wires are ever so slightly thicker. So again, there's going to be a little bit less loss. So we plug our one end into there. Now pretend this is going through your, your house to another room, okay? So we've then got the, uh, the other end. Now, 
plug another adapter into there. But obviously, if you've got your house networked, it's all going to be ended in face plates anyway. So you could just plug your sockets, you could just plug your newly made leads straight into your face plates. Now, the downside of this is you are tethered to the controller, but obviously this is not going to be an issue if you're using a little mobile dongle. If you've got a, if you've, for example, got a Vodafone mobile dongle and uh, you find that you get a good signal in the back bedroom upstairs, then you can push the cable, you know, you can, you can push the signal through the Ethernet cable to where you actually want to use it because you might want to use the, your laptop in the lounge but you might not actually have a good mobile reception there for the dongle. So you can put the dongle against the window at the back of the house or in your hall or in your bedroom or, or wherever you decide to put it. And then you'll be able to use your laptop still via the dongle, but yet the dongle's getting a good signal while you, you know, you know, mobiles can be fussy. You could not get a signal at the front of the house, but in the back of the house, the signal might be good. So by uh, running a 10 or 15 meter lead, I haven't tried it with the USB dongles. I presume it might even work a little bit further, but I haven't tried that. So you will need to experiment on that one. So we'll plug in our Xbox controller. Okay. And now can you see that uh, it's already lit up? So it's recognizing, it's recognizing the controller and uh, that's via this 10 meter lead plus another meter and a half of rubbish USB lead. And if we go, just to quickly show you. Okay, and if I was to crash to this tree, yeah, the controller's vibrated and it hasn't, uh, it hasn't cut out. Yeah, controller's vibrating away here. But once I go over 15 meters, I do struggle. And I don't know whether that's because there's a voltage drop or whether it's to do with the actual data signal. I'm not too sure. So maybe somebody out there who knows more about USB can answer that one. Because I would like to have it working over a much longer distance than 15 meters. I'm not sure if I was to get a USB powered hub, whether that would help. Let's just uh, leave that to one side. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the Xbox controller working, but again, you can use it for loads of different things. I also got this one made up. I actually got this with uh, a USB dongle when, it, uh, when I used to use it. I don't have the SIM card for it anymore. Let me just put that on mute. So this is uh, another thing you can do. Basically, uh, this is like if your device is lacking power. So for example, if I was to use this here, maybe it would give me another few meters. I, I haven't experimented with this one, I've made it up, but I haven't experimented yet to see if I can get past the 15 meters. But uh, as you can see here, there's two USB plugs. One carries the power and the signal, and then the other one purely carries the five volt, uh, the five volt signal from the other USB to give it a little bit more oomph. Yeah, and again, I've wired that up. You know, the same as the others. Yeah, so there, that's it. Hopefully you found this uh, useful if you were thinking about running USB down, uh, down Cat5 cables. If you want any of these cables or if you want any of the, the little RJ45 plugs, please visit my eBay shop, which is mrtelephone.co.uk. Okay, so www.mrtelephone.co.uk. Uh, thanks all for watching. Hope you found it useful. If you like it, please give a thumbs up and please subscribe for more how-to videos in the future. Okay, thanks very much. Bye now.